Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on another Radar Omega video. Um, today we're going to go over the Salado Tornado. Um, that happened here in Texas. For those of you who don't pay attention to the weather in Texas, um, I chased this event, but I missed this tornado by, by about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the radar imagery from that day which is available at Alpha subscribers. If you want to go back in time, you can go back up to six months and view any radar imagery uh, during that time frame. And so today, we're going to get this one, and we're going to look at it. Now, I've already got the history up here. It was from April the 12th of last week, which was a Tuesday, I believe. All right. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the radar. On the left-hand side of the screen over here is the reflectivity, and over here is the velocity. We're also going to take a look at a few other products. Um, but for right now, we're going to do this split screen. And the storm that we are talking about is this complex of storms right here. Here is Florence, here is Salado, and of course those of you familiar with the Gerald Tornado of 1997, here's Gerald, and this obviously is I-35. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move the little bar down here to advance the radar in time. And we're going to watch this storm develop, and notice both sides of the screen here as this starts to develop right into this region, a little bit of inflow right in here. So what this is essentially doing is drawing in air and bringing it into the storm. So when we're out chasing, we look for winds that are mostly easterly or southeasterly, because that's going to give us a better chance at seeing the tornado. And so let's go ahead and keep going with this. Now notice that little notch went away, and a new appendage formed right here. And this is going to be the one to watch. Also over here, look at the velocity in the same area. Notice the greens going towards the radar. The red's going away, I believe. I could have that backwards, but it doesn't matter too much. Just Remember that one's going away and one's going towards the radar. And notice the radar is over here. So it's pointing this way. And so you can see that this is beginning to show broad rotation. Let's go ahead and keep going. I have to switch back to that. And notice it's starting to develop that hook there ever so slightly. A little bit more, you can see the precipitation here on the side. Wrapping around, we're starting to develop that classic hook shape right about here. Right in here, just north of Florence, you can see that it produced, actually it's, let's move this here. I don't want to be in full screen mode. Right here you can see a tornado. Now it's very weak. It was an EF1 tornado. So you can see that the radar image, even though it doesn't look that great, right in here, there's still circulation there. And you can tell by looking at velocity. So you can't always rely solely on the reflectivity image. But let's go ahead and keep playing it. And it's going to start me over. No, it's not. It's going to start right there. Okay, cool. So now you can see more of a hook, and you can continue to see more reflectivity in here, or more uh, rotation in here as it continues along its path. And then it keeps going, and now right here, this last frame, between these two frames right here, you can see we have a classic supercell right here. And here you can begin to see a new circulation develop. 
I would say by now you're probably seeing a wall cloud at this point. Let's go ahead and erase this and keep going a little bit further. And now you can begin to really see it amp up here. Now there was one commenter who asked about gate to gate velocity or gate to gate wind shear. So in order to see that, let's zoom in here, right over here west of Cedar Valley. Remember, this is archived footage, I mean archived radar. This is not current. And so you have a little ball right here. And that's kind of right where your tornado is going to be. Right in here. And so let's keep going a little bit farther. And you see that get much more intense. And then bam, right here. You really see it start to... Let's clear that other one. You really see a well-defined hook here. Very well-defined. With a very good looking couplet right here. So this is gate to gate wind shear. So if you really want to view that, let's get rid of this. Let's clear this out. Now let's click there. Now if we want to look at this, now it's going to be kind of hard. We have 62 miles per hour, 91, minus 91. So if you calculate the difference between those, that's your gate to gate wind shear. But let's go ahead and keep playing it, and we'll watch this as it gets closer to Salado. I'm going to zoom out just ever so slightly here. Let's put this back in motion. Now we see a huge ball right here. Now, one thing that would be interesting to see, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Here we have different products. Now, we have Velocity. We also have storm relative velocity. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick and look at it in relation to this. Now, that's not a very good one. Is this 905? These are completely different time frames. So this is not helping us. Let's get this back up here. It looks like it's kind of hard to see because the um, it's kind of hard to tell. Storm relative velocity is not a high-res product. So we're just going to stick with high-res velocity here. And we have to play it again because it likes to play. That's something the Radar Omega team is going to have to take a look at. I'm going to report that as an issue. Um, where if you switch products, it doesn't drop you right on the same frame. Um, but you can see here, huge signature there. And then here you really see it get tight, and you can really tell here with this huge ball on here and that's your that's your tornado right there right in here and then we're just going to let it keep going and th there's a, it it gets even more intense i would say right about and then here we go again it starts to occlude now here is probably when it's doing ef3 damage i'm going to guess somewhere in this range right here then something really strange happens and i the meteorologist and the audience might be able to tell me why. I, 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 well, I've studied it a little bit, but I don't remember it well enough to actually try to describe what's going on here. But you notice that this occludes. It goes from being this really nice looking hook, or bad looking, depending on your perspective. And then it, it just goes, it just looks terrible now. In terms of, look at that, it's not even defined. But by now, this starts to move north, and this has been noted by some. Uh, it was also noted in the survey. It goes due north after having gone basically east, slightly northeast, and then bam. It goes due north and dissipates. Very strange. And notice the reflectivity. That storm just completely gets obliterated. Why? I, like I said, I have no idea. And so that is kind of an overview of the Salado tornado. Let's look at some of the other products. Right here, we're going to switch to correlation coefficient. This is a very useful one if you're looking for debris. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see any because I haven't looked at it on two frames yet. But you can kind of see there might be some light debris in here. And you can kind of tell. 
and this is just it's not as it's not what you this blue and let's say you can barely see that hold on let's use this color and let's make this a little thicker this right here that's still hard to see what if i use black that blue blob right there shows that there's a difference in size and shape as opposed to all the other stuff here that might be rain or hail or whatever. So you might see some some hail back in here, but that's what the correlation coefficient is. So it tells the difference between the sizes and shapes of objects. And if there's boards and tree limbs and trees and parts of a house or whatever being lofted up into the tornado those are obviously going to reflect back to the radar a much different signature um, and so that's what the correlation coefficient will tell you and that's where you get your debris ball this isn't your classic debris ball here but it does look like there may be a little bit there uh, this did end up getting rated an ef3 tornado thankfully it didn't last terribly long and then it goes and you can see it kind of just goes away, and then it's gone. And that's that's pretty much it for that. Uh, we'll go over a couple of other things. I mean, you have your hydrometer classification. So there was actually some pretty large hail. You can use hydrometer classification to kind of get an idea of what might be in the storm. And you can see the core of the storm over here. Let's see if I can pick the right color this time. The core of this storm, right in here, there's Young's Port. So you can tell this whole portion right here, all these reds, if you look up at the thing, uh, I'm not going to do it, but if you tap on it on your phone or iPad or whatever, you can see that each, each one of these means something different. The algorithm in the radar is detecting that this might be hail. It also might be very large raindrops. In this situation, uh, it was very large hail in, in, in many cases. You can also go back and you can use another tool. Now, I don't know what all of these are. I may go over them again sometime in the future after I learn more about what they are. But we're going to use VIL. I'm just, I just learned a couple of the ones I really needed, and then that's what I use. So you can see the vertically integrated liquid here, which is what that stands for. It even says it right there. And you can see these really bright colors. That's going to be your hail cores. Pretty big hail in there. I don't remember what the... I think there was like a five and a half inch stone somewhere around the Salado. So it's pretty sizable hail. Especially right here. If you look at these right here, let's go and take a look at the inspector tool. 79 kilograms per meter squared. That's more than likely hail. I mean, that's got to be hail, even though it's displaced. Now, the reason these don't line up, and let me show you what I mean. Notice that this, let's use the circle or the right color here. This circle and this circle don't line up, but that's because of the time frames. VIL is a product that only gets produced, I think, every so often, every 10 minutes, because it requires the radar to scan the entire storm. Uh, and that's how the radar kind of does it, is it goes at tilt, the first tilt, the second tilt, and then all the way up until it's, so it takes one full sweep at the lowest tilt, another full sweep at the next tilt. That's how you also get your composite reflectivity. But some of the other products also come from that whole suite of sweeps. Um, and VIL is one of those, so you don't get them very often. Um, and so that's why they look separated here. But you can tell that the bottom line here is that this was producing some pretty large hail. And let's go ahead and clear all of that. Um, let's go back to my other tool here. Um, what other ones can we look at? Um, we've kind of sort of looked at storm relative velocity. It's not a high res product, so it doesn't do as good a job as resolving but sometimes it's useful um these are your dual pole products the correlation coefficient hydrometer classification those are the ones we looked at 
can also look at precip accumulation, which isn't always accurate, but it kind of gives you a rough idea of how much precipitation has fallen. Uh, let's do storm total just for fun, so you all can see. And you can see that it's estimated two to three inches, and then over Belton, it estimated much higher amounts. Now, some of this could be due to hail, it could be due to other factors. So, this has to be taken kind of with a grain of salt, but that's why we need ground observations for that sort of thing. Um, then Echo Tops is another one that you like to that we like to use, and you can kind of get an idea of the storm strength over time with Echo Tops. Now it doesn't appear to be coming up, but let's oh there it goes. So you can see the storm tops as it's going on in time here. Let's hold this, let's bring this back. Let's watch. Right here. No, let's move it over. So this one was at fifty thousand feet when it was producing that tornado, and this other part of it was see. And it, the, the timing is off. Notice the times are different, but you can kind of get an idea over a period of time what it was like. These older products um, require more sweeps. So because the last sweep, the reason is because the last sweep is what is used to get so this is the, the, the echo tops is the last the highest echo that was found in the storm so if the radar beam doesn't go high enough the echo tops could actually be higher or the actual top of the storm could be higher or if it's you know yeah that, that's gus sleep it there so that's kind of a quick overview of this so videos kind of are almost 20 minutes now so i'm going to probably end it here um, if you guys have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to see more future content like this, um, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, I would really love to have you guys' ideas on what kind of videos to make in the future with Radar Omega, maybe doing videos with uh, other products, uh, other tools, like maybe Gibson Ridge, or maybe even Radar Scope. Radar Scope and Radar Omega are going to be somewhat similar, uh, but there are some big differences. And we'll go over some more of those differences in the future, but I'd really love to see what you guys want to me to make videos on, and I'll do my best to get those out to you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.